we're recording anyway. Yeah, it feels like it. Yeah. I like Hi, your baby. background. Thank I you. See a Thank plant. you. My plants! I got my plants in here finally, and I'm so happy about it. Because they were just not in a place that brought anyone joy. And very much in a place where the baby could get at them once he started pulling up. Which he has done! So, it's good that they are in here. It's good that they are up high. And I've got my little tableau going on on this. The shelf that they're on is super messy, so I'm hiding it. But, um... <laughs> They're not on the floor. They're not on a thing that they can ruin. Everything is beautiful. Is he getting to all the things? He's pulling himself up. He's crawling. He's not getting to all the things yet because he can't, like, he's not cruising, they call it. He's not, like, moving around once he's up there. He's just pretty um, stuck. Once he gets up, he's like, hmm, now I'm up here. (laughs) I can reach the things within my arm's reach. And then fall down to sit again <laughs> okay so you know it's, it's a process yeah but yeah he would definitely have been getting to the plants because they were like right in the most interesting place for him to get to <laughs> and plants are pretty interesting they're like yeah. all different colors and you can grab them and they move around and it's good fun yeah so exciting. I always think, oh my God, this is too fast. Yeah, but a year is not a long time. No. And he's like a whole different person within a year. Also, just a heads up that I'm Hawkeye while we do this. Which is perfect because we wanted to talk about breastfeeding today. So, for yeah, anyone... and I realized that I had forgotten to pump before we started. So, yeah. Here we are with my noiseless pumps that are pretty effective. (laughs) Which we're going to get to for anyone. I'm pretty sure there were several people that just said, what? You're what? (laughs) She said a word, but I didn't get it. (laughs) We'll get there. Um, So yeah, breastfeeding. Um, Breastfeeding! We are specifically talking about breastfeeding because that's what Megan is doing mostly. Right? We'll get mm-hmm. to that. And it's what I plan on doing, hoping that I will be able to. Um, so that is all we can speak to. It's not in any way saying that it's the only way. I mean, you guys know we're, we're not we're not saying that for any of the things that we're talking about. It's just what we can speak yeah. to. Yeah. Cool. So... Um, I want to ask you if you could reiterate a little bit, like what your journey was. We know from the birthing episode, from the second part of it, that he had a little tongue tie and that you Mm -hmm. got some advice and heard that it could uh, interfere with breastfeeding and be hard. And then you decided to, um, snip it. Is that the right word? I get, I mean, that's what happened. Okay. Um, it was, it's just like that flap of skin that connects your tongue to the bottom of your mouth. Right. Um, you know, they're different widths with everybody. And for some, um, babies it restricts how far your tongue can go out. So, um, the midwife diagnosed him with a tongue tie and suggested that we remove it. And then we had a conversation about it and well, remove it suggested that we all, I don't know, snip it. <laughs> and, um, we had a conversation about it and we ended up doing that. Right. So maybe to explain that a little bit more, cause I also never really thought about that a lot, what a good latch means. So they, mm-hmm. so for example, when I heard for the first time that they get a pretty good amount of your breast in their mouth and not just the mm-hmm. nipple, mm-hmm. Uh, I was surprised because, you know, I just never knew. So yeah, can you, is it possible for you to explain how he latches on and how, you know, the tongue plays a role? And I don't know if this is Yeah, specific. so I think that we should probably link to, to a resource about this. 
Yeah. Just to get a little more specific, but based on my understanding of it, um, their tongue goes out over their bottom gum and over their bottom lip. Um, the lips are sort of, they call it flanged out, um, which means that they're like duck lips. Like right. they're both, you know, like a kissy face, but with the lips apart. Mm-hmm. Um, and then basically the majority of the areola around the nipple is going to go into their mouth, ideally. Um, and then they're sucking. So you want the lips to be flared out um, and the tongue to be able to get pretty far up there. So that, cause that's what is massaging the, you know, the areola and nipple as they're sucking. Right. Mm-hmm. So that's what's doing the movements to create the flow or to encourage the flow okay. again. That's how I understand it. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to link to something about breastfeeding and latching um, so that people can get real information <laughs> um, yep. or more accurate information um, from more expert sources. But yeah, so that is what you want in a latch. Um, his latch wasn't perfect. Like he often, his bottom lip wasn't flared out. Mm -hmm. Um, But he didn't have any problems with weight gain. So it didn't become a big issue. Um, And I didn't have a lot of nipple issues, um, which could be the other thing. Although, so for the first few weeks, I did use a nipple shield. And I think I mentioned that in the um, after birth episode two. Yeah. Um, and that was for both. It was to help him latch and it was to pull my pretty flat nipples out. Right. Um, and it did both of those things beautifully. Yay! (laughs) And yeah, yeah. And so within, within the first six weeks, I think we were pretty much off the nipple shield. Um, I would occasionally use it at night because both of us were tired. <laughs> and, um, I think the, the last few times I used it, it was at night because, um, he was feeling a little lazy. I was feeling a little lazy and it was a very helpful little thing. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I think before eight weeks we were fully off the nipple shield, but it was really great. It was so helpful. And it was one of those that has a little contact window. Um, so it's basically, it looks like a silicone cone and then it has like a, um, flat circle around it. Mm -hmm. And it's really thin. It's really thin silicone. And the ones that I have have like a little notch on one side of that big flat circle. And you're supposed to line that up to where his nose will be there. And that's so he can smell you appropriately. That's so he can Uh, like get, um, that skin to skin attachment, mm -hmm. um, while he's breastfeeding with a nipple shield, I think. Um, so that was great. It did not, we, I didn't always line it up right, but <laughs> <laughs> I did some of the time. Um, and yeah, it was a little bit of a, of a learning curve, but, um, both of us eventually got it really well. Did you, uh, apart from the nipple shield that you got from your midwife, mm-hmm get any like did you have a lactation consultant did your midwife did you ask her for any more help did you I don't know do an online course on (laughs) breastfeeding I did actually now that you mentioned that I think there was an online um or a, a breastfeeding where was that from I was either 
Mama Natural or just like some um you know when I when I was pregnant and I think when most people are pregnant you get a whole bunch of targeted marketing when you sign up for a baby registry or sign up for an app or something. So like I was getting emails left, right yeah. and center. Um, and so I think it was one of those emails that came and was like, try our free breastfeeding course. And it was like a 45 minute video thing where they talked about a latch and they talked about um, how often, and they talked about um, different things you could do. I don't know, like massaging the breasts and warm heat and what to do if you get a clogged duck or mastitis or something like that. So, um, I did do that. I think that was helpful, especially for the latch conversation, <laughs> like what that, what that was and what it needed to be. Yeah. Um, and when I went for my postpartum visits to my midwife, she would always have me breastfeed him when we were there. Um, and check his latch and check my nipples. And, um, if I had any concerns or questions, I talked to her about them. Um, I don't remember anything big. She did suggest the lanolin nipple cream that I used, um, and gave me a bunch of samples of it. Um, which turns out I could have just used the samples. I didn't need to buy a tube of it, <laughs> but... <laughs> I did. If anyone needs a tube of lanolin, let me know. <laughs> um, so, anyone that's in the U.S. <laughs> correct. Anyone in the U.S. Um, yeah. So I had pretty good support. Um, my mom breastfed all of her babies and she was staying with me. So she helped some too. Um, and it was mostly just... Because I didn't have any big issues, it was mostly just like staying positive when we did have trouble latching, which he did sometimes, especially at the beginning. It was just like encouraging us both to like keep going and keep trying and we're going to get it and it'll be okay. And um, mm -hmm. I think if I'd had any, any big issues at the beginning, that would have been harder. But um, I kind of expected to have issues because... Okay what you hear about breastfeeding and i think this is a good way to skew the narrative in terms of my personal way of thinking about stuff is that it's going to be hard um and that's because breastfeeding is really encouraged by um doctors and other care providers because of you know a huge number of benefits that come from breastfeeding um, and just, you get antibodies, you get probiotics, you get um, all kinds of really specific and good stuff out of breast milk that is attuned specifically to your body and your baby. Like, you and your baby um, work it out between your two bodies. It's, it's miraculous. It's like crazy. Yeah, like um, if the baby is sick, the breast milk changes to give him... Right, if the baby is sick, my, bo my body will recognize that the baby is sick, create those antibodies, and pump them into him. I and think that is just so... Wow. It's insane, right? Yeah. Like, that. it's crazy that that happens. So, breastfeeding is obviously massively encouraged by doctors and midwives and caregivers. Mm -hmm. Um, and so because it's so like miraculous and beautiful and amazing, and there's like a lot of bonding experience that happens through breastfeeding too, like there's hormonal bonding that, and it helps to fight postpartum sometimes. And like, it's just postpartum depression or anxiety, um, because of the hormones it releases in the mother because of the bonding, the bonding hormones. Experience. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so there's obviously a huge number of benefits. So it's been really like pushed and encouraged and they talk about all the benefits and they talk about all the, and so I think there's been a little bit of a like reality check 
from a lot of moms that have had big struggles breastfeeding. Yeah. And from advocates for those moms who recognize that breastfeeding can be a big struggle Mm -hmm. and that we need to acknowledge that along with acknowledging the benefits and the beauty of it. Um, And so when you consume breastfeeding stuff and when you go in breastfeeding forums, obviously most of the people going to those places are going to be people that are having troubles, that are having struggles, that are encountering challenges in their breastfeeding life and times. Um, And um, so that was a lot of what I had found out about breastfeeding. And I also am a person that likes to expect the worst and be pleasantly surprised. (laughs) (laughs) So I think I had also done a little bit of that in my head of like, okay, this is probably going to be really hard and I probably just need to expect it to be really hard. And then if it's not, that'll be great. Did you feel like that that did help you, that you expected it to be hard and were I think so. Um, ready for it? Yeah. I mean, especially because it, it wasn't that hard, it's been, at least in the beginning. Um, but even my perception that it wasn't that hard, I think, is somewhat built on the idea that I expected it to be really hard. Yeah, that's why I asked. I, I, I um, in my perception of what I got from you through the experience, mm-hmm. I, yeah, that's why I asked. I, I would have guessed that that helped you go through those experiences and n- not. Um, experience them not despair (laughs) yeah and like you were expecting worse so Mm -hmm. I I I think that took a little bit of the intensity off of it I'm having yeah I think that's fair I think that's really fair um Like, I was expecting to bleed, and I was expecting to um, have super cracked nipples, and I was expecting to just, like, really, really struggle, Um, which a lot of people do. And that's just part of Mm. their, especially first couple months of breastfeeding. Um, And so, yeah, the fact that I didn't do a lot of bleeding, and I did have some painful latching like I had some scabs on my nipple and had a couple blood blisters and um that hurt for a week or two um but on the whole that first section of breastfeeding was went really smoothly compared to what I expected so I think that was that was a helpful expectation to set that it was going to be really tough um and I totally understand that that's not going to be everyone's coping mechanism you know like not everyone that's not going to work for everyone um a lot of people need to understand that it's going to be beautiful and it's going to be meaningful and it's going to be super impactful for their child um in order to even conceive of trying to do it yeah it's entirely just a personal um, mechanism of approach that I use right. to um, to try to enjoy stuff. I think it's interesting. Yeah. I like that you shared that. Yeah. So can I ask you about something that I perceived as a bit of a struggle for a minute there? Mm-hmm. When... I'm not going to have the right vocabulary here. <laughs> Help me out. Okay. Um, when when he was choking on your milk, when too much came out, I don't know yeah. if that was an oversupply or, again, I don't have the vocabulary. Please. Right. So in. the one thing I did, and that was, that was a few months in. So I had so much milk. I had buckets and buckets of milk. <laughs> I could have filled a bucket with my milk every day. 
Um, <laughs> it hurts my breast just thinking about that. It wasn't that painful, actually, because they just oh, leaked. Oh, they okay. leaked. <laughs> which, is, which I'm very grateful for, actually, because I feel like if they hadn't been leaking, I would have been... I would have gotten an infection. Mm -hmm. um, but I had these... Um, you know, reusable cloth breast pads, um, and they make disposable ones and they make reusable ones. Uh, my friend sent me like 28 reusable breast pads, which was amazing. I needed every single one of them <laughs> at the beginning. <laughs> um, and we were doing laundry like every day, every other day. And I, I went through them like crazy because I was leaking constantly. Um, and so you, you had asked me about a lactation consultant and I got on the phone with a lactation consultant, um, at my pediatrician's practice. Um, it's not my pediatrician, the baby's pediatrician. <laughs> um, and because I couldn't get an appointment with her, she was just not there on the days I was going to the doctor and I was not going to go another day because I was already going more often than I wanted to. Yeah. Um, and so I had like a 10 minute phone call with her. <laughs> the advice she gave me was very relevant for a lot of people and just was not the advice that I needed. So she was like, you know, make sure you prepare the meal and use warm, wet heat. And some people use ginger tea before they breastfeed to like get their milk stimulated. And, um, that sort of thing. She, and she, I think she talked about, she may have mentioned supplements or something like that. And that's really good advice. If you need to stimulate your breast milk, the advice that I needed <laughs> was like, how much is safe to Haka off before I feed him so that my milk doesn't get more stimulated. I need to know about like, should I do block feeding at this point or is it too early? Should I, you know, all of these things to like regulate, to bring down my milk supply would have been really helpful advice um, at that point. Now I'm like moving into my menstrual cycle coming back and my supply going down. And now at those pieces of advice are great and I use them um and I did use them when I got my first period and my supply went to like nothing um and so but at the time that was not what I needed to know um so it wasn't the most useful information to have at that point I, basically everyone just kept saying like stick with it your milk will regulate eventually and I didn't, I didn't know what that meant. Like I knew what that meant, but I didn't understand really the like drop off a cliff that that would be, <laughs> which is what happened. So when my, you started by asking me about him choking on my milk. Yeah. I'm going to go back to that. <laughs> so um, when he was about three months I think it probably corresponded to him going through a, a leap. Um, so he went through a mental leap and we started having trouble breastfeeding. So he would latch on really well and then we'd get about a minute and a half in and then my letdown reflex would happen, which is when your milk starts flowing. like. Um, so they'll suck on your nipple for a little bit and then you can feel it happening most of the time. Wow. And like, for me, it feels like it's a little bit painful. It's almost like you really have to pee. <gasps> um, and sometimes I do have to pee cause I think it's a full body like hormone thing, but I'm not positive about that. It's just my armchair theory. Um, but it often makes me have to pee. Um, and then 
basically he can pull off and my milk is coming out anyway. Uh. Like he doesn't have to suck and it's coming out anyway. So sometimes when he would pull off, like especially in the time when I had oversupply, my milk would like shoot everywhere. <laughs> It got Hunter in the face one time. He was like three feet away from me. It was, oh it was, there was a lot. Um, so it would just like fountain out of my boob. Um, after, after the letdown reflex happened. So, um, when that would happen during this time, like three months in, when I still had a lot of oversupply and, um, something had changed in him he would start like he couldn't keep up with the amount of milk that was going into his mouth yeah um and so he started choking and that obviously made him cry and um i after i looked it up after i figured out what it was you can hear like this click start to happen in their throat where like it's there's too much going on. I don't know physiologically what's happening then, but, um, he'd start like doing this clicky swallow and then he would choke and then he would scream. And I, at the beginning, I didn't know what was happening. So I would try to get him back on cause I thought he was screaming cause he was hungry yeah. and then it would happen again. And then he would scream more. And like, I couldn't get him to eat for more than like, five minutes um and it left both of us just entirely exhausted and stressed out and and crying yeah <laughs> um and I remember we visited one of my mother-in-laws and um I had been up to that point just breastfeeding in the room with people um we had all of all the grandparents in a little bubble. So, um, we were seeing them and I, so after that point, I started taking him out of the room to feed him because I knew he would cry and I knew it would be kind of a struggle. Yeah. And I didn't, I was just so upset. I didn't know what the hell was going on. And it was really scary. Like he was, choking and I didn't know what to do about it. Um, so, and I was so annoyed at myself cause I hadn't, I didn't do any reading. I didn't know anything. Like I felt like I didn't know enough. Um, I felt like I didn't know enough and I need, I should know more. And I didn't have anyone to ask and I didn't have anyone to help me. Um, cause at that point I was, far past my postpartum stuff with my midwife and I could have called the pediatrician and that's what I would recommend to someone in my position now would be to call because I knew there was a lactation consultant there so I to call um the pediatrician's office and try to speak with a lactation consultant um and what I did instead also worked <laughs> I googled and that worked and I figured out what was happening um and worked out a solution for it on my own, um, which was I would haka, which let's talk about what the haka is. Yeah. Let's see if I can pull <laughs> one off. Um, so a haka is a, oh, there's a lot of milk in here, um, silicone, uh, you could call it a breast pump. It works by suction. So it's, if you're watching the video, you can see it. It's got a big, um, open wide mouth and it kind of funnels down to the neck of the pump. And then there's a collection area underneath it. And it's um, all it's kind one of, piece. It's all one piece. Yeah. Um, and you don't, you don't pump it with your hand manually and it's not attached to any sort of electric pump. So it's just, Basically, especially in the case of oversupply and your letdown coming out, it collects milk that's going to come out of your breast anyway. <laughs> yeah. um, so when my milk is pretty high, I can 
put on my hakas and it will pull out what's happening. Or if I can stimulate a letdown somehow um, by like watching a video with a baby or like massaging <laughs> my breasts or doing something like that. Um, or thinking about him breastfeeding, which sometimes will stimulate a letdown. <laughs> so cool. Um, then it will collect more, but, um, <laughs> uh, sorry, he's making noise in the background. <laughs> um, so why did I start talking about hakas? Oh, right. I would haka the... off milk and I would get four ounces easily every time, <laughs> wow. uh, which is not normal. I don't think it's not like the reason that you use a haka is not to get off four ounces. It's usually to like catch the letdown on the other side while you're breastfeeding on one side. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, I would haka four ounces or so, put it in a bottle and then have him drink from the bottle. Oh. And usually I would lay him on my breast and, you know, so that we had some skin to skin time while he was drinking out of a bottle. Um, and I did that once I figured out that it was the overactive letdown. I did that along with, well, and I, again, I wasn't diagnosed with overactive letdown. I just diagnosed myself with overactive letdown yeah. um, because of what was happening. Um, so along with pumping off milk and feeding him from a bottle, Usually at the end of a feed, I would try to get him to latch on. Um, sometimes I would still have enough milk that that would still make him choke. So that was stressful. Um, but sometimes it would have, it would, there would enough of would have come off that he would still drink some from the breast, um, from the boob. And that was really stressful. It was not fun. Yeah. And it made me really um engage with my ideas about breastfeeding and fed is best and I cognitively believe fed is best and it made me really have to engage with that for myself mm -hmm. and um because I have absolutely no judgment for anyone outside of me that ends up not being able to breastfeed or decides not to breastfeed. Um, like sincerely, I'm so excited for them that they've taken action to make their own decisions, right? But when it came to me, I had a lot of feelings of failure. That's so interesting and There's that there was a gap there you i mean i feel like that's pretty standard for people that it's a lot easier to give other people grace and other people allow other yeah. people um give other people the benefit of the doubt and give other people um room to make decisions that you would find difficult, you know, that's, I feel like yeah, the way you would judge yourself, that's a very normal thing. Yeah. Um, so, but going through this process and recognizing, and actually there was, there was like some scary articles that were like, this, you, you baby can actually choke. Like this could be a problem. <laughs> that was like really scary okay. and um so you know obviously that's not an option like i'm not gonna just push through mm -hmm. and let him choke or nearly choke every time um until we figure it out so feeding him bottles of my milk was the way to go right like yeah I still had a ton of milk, so that wasn't a problem. Um, I had ways to get it into a bottle. He would drink from a bottle. So, like, all of those things 
were really good. All of those yeah. things made it really possible for me to continue to give him my breast milk, um, even if it was through a bottle. But it was still really hard to um, process that for me emotionally and yeah. my feelings of failure, even though if anyone else had told me about this, I'd have been like, that's awesome. I'm so glad that you found a way to do something about it. I'm so glad that you figured out what it was and like you were able to keep feeding, <laughs> you know, like. Yeah, you would never call it a failure in someone else. But absolutely somehow it not. was for you. Um, yeah. But yeah. So that lasted, I don't remember. I think I sent you a video when it was, when I was like in the middle of it. It was like two or three weeks. It felt like a really long time. Even <laughs> to I me, think... it felt like a really long time. I would have yeah. said a month or something around that. Maybe. I don't know. It didn't last super long. But in the, like, relative to how long he'd been alive, it was a while. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, and it's something you do, you are confronted with multiple times a day. So, oh, yeah, through that, I think day. it feels Yeah, he was longer. still, he was still eating every three hours. He was still nursing every three hours, um, for sure. And even at night, it was like four or five hours max. Right. Um, well, actually, it might have been longer than that. Sometimes it was longer than that. But in that case, I would wake up because my boobs hurt so much because they were so full. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. So then I also started block feeding, which is when you only right. feed off of one side for a certain block of time. Um, I ended up doing every six hours, I would switch. Um, and I think that's sort of the maximum they recommend for block feeding. Again, I did all this by looking it up online. I didn't do it in connection with a professional, which might have been a better way to do it. Um, but it, it worked out pretty well. And they say not to go longer than that in order not to get an infection on the breast that you're not using. That and also in order to not irreparably reduce your supply. Oh, okay. So the idea of block feeding is that you want to send the message that this breast is full and it is there's no demand on it, so you can stop making breast milk. Uh, okay. Um, and yeah, I think you probably could get an infection from it if you're not careful, um, or if you're prone to infections. <laughs> it's yeah. Sometimes not about being careful. Um, Again, I would recommend if someone does this, like, talk to a lactation consultant about it. Absolutely. a lot of them are just attached to your doctor's office that you're going to be engaged with anyway. So, um, yeah, so I was block feeding for a while. And that regulated my milk to where I could breastfeed with him latched on in the afternoons and evenings mm -hmm. and would give him bottles in the morning. So I would, I would haka and give him a bottle in the morning and then your supply is lower in the afternoon anyway. So your supply is highest in the morning and then um, tapers off toward the afternoon. And so um, I ended up, yeah, I ended up breastfeeding in the afternoon and hawking in the morning. Mm -hmm. um, and then my supply regulated <laughs> mm -hmm. and I think that was around four months so it was later than people told me it would happen everyone was saying like around three months it'll regulate um and I didn't regulate till later than that and regulating is when your boobs well at least if you have oversupply in the beginning um your supply regulating is when it decides like okay this is how much I actually need and we're gonna make that much mm -hmm. we're not gonna try to make more than that um at least that's what it was in my body <laughs> um 
And what happened then was a little bit scary because I had been block feeding so aggressively and like to the extent that you were allowed to block feed, mm -hmm. um, my breasts really responded to that. So when they regulate it, when I regulate it, I had a few days where by the afternoon I didn't have enough milk anymore. Um, and you know, luckily I had had tons of milk, so I built up a little bit of a supply. Um, so before so I when didn't... you had too much, you had built up a supply and had some in the freezer. Yeah, I had frozen milk and I had um, refrigerated milk. So, um, and one thing I did look up with block feeding, and that is true of most people when they're block feeding, is that if you start alternating again, if you start um, applying demand again, sorry, um, your supply will increase again. Uh, so it responds really well to switching back to alternating, generally speaking. And that was true with me too. So when I, when my supply did go down like dramatically, um, I freaked out a little bit for a few days. And then after a few days of switching back and forth, I had oversupply again. So <laughs> that was a roller coaster. I, it was, it, it's a roller coaster, man. Let me tell you. And hilariously, at the beginning, I was like, everybody talks about lactation cookies and like lactation bites and stuff and lactation snacks. And so my, my mom and I had made a bunch of lactation snacks and lactation oh, cookies. And I would, I was like, I'm not allowed to eat those because there's too much going on here. So I had those in the freezer too, which was great. So I pulled those out of the freezer, ate a couple of them. They were delicious, by the way. Mm -hmm. I'm going to want those um, ones, please. You know what? We can probably link to them, actually. Yeah. It was from a food blog, Eating okay, Bird Food. Cool. Um, <laughs> so, um, it was perfect. She had, the food blogger, one of the food bloggers I follow, had gone through pregnancy, like, and had her baby, like, three or four months before I had my baby. Oh, perfect. So, it was perfect timing. So, she had done all the lactation recipes. She did, like... She was the one that I took the recipes from that I didn't end up making before <laughs> I gave birth. Um, the freezer recipes. And oh, she was I'm just great. Use those. Cool. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Well, she's not vegan, actually. So I don't know if all of the recipes okay. will work for you. But she does She does a fair number of vegan recipes. So, okay. um, yeah. Anyway, I pulled those back out of the fridge out of the freezer and had some of those and I started alternating what I ended up doing and what I'm actually still doing now is one boob per feed. Oh, okay. So if you're looking to stimulate your supply, you want them to fully empty one boob and drink from the other boob so that both breasts are getting stimulated and both breasts are encouraged to continue to make milk. Mm -hmm. Um, if you have a ton of milk, you don't need to do that necessarily. Um, and so what I, the first step in block feeding, like the first version of block feeding is one boob per feed. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's what I ended up doing. And that ended up being a really good, happy medium for my supply to be regular and not over and not under. The music is really loud. <laughs> can you so hear? Is my drinking probably. Yes, I can. Okay. Well, sorry about the music. Um, it's very distracting. <laughs> okay. So that's what I ended up doing after my supply went down. Um, and it all went back to what it was before. And even better, because he had a stronger latch at that point and was no longer choking on my letdown. Although he did occasionally pull off um, if the letdown was too strong for him, which probably also had to do with some physical or mental development where he could recognize this is too much and pull off instead of just trying mm -hmm. to keep up with it. Um, 
So probably some combination of my supply going down a little bit and therefore my letdown being a little less intense and um, his development to the point where he could recognize, oh, this isn't good anymore and pull yeah. off um, was how both of us ended up um, getting back to being able to breastfeed consistently um, without having to give him bottles. So wonderful. Yeah. That was a whole adventure. Since you already mentioned your hakas in this story, I would like to throw in a question here that we got. We were asked to please talk about breastfeeding. One side note. So I, you can generally always send us questions about anything or mm -hmm. requests for topics. Sometimes I will ask in our Instagram stories before we record a certain topic if you have questions for that specific topic. I did that yesterday, so we did get one question, which is to, or more a request, to please talk about pumping. Um, and she said, why and how? <laughs> which I thought was wonderful. So Perfect. Megan, pumping, why and how? Many reasons and many ways. <laughs> um, so. Which actually was also a question, sorry, um, no, no. that I had for Megan. Right. So in, in my, I don't want to buy none of the things and zero waste <laughs> and, you know, nothing electronic and she crazy. Um, I... I got really excited when I learned about Hagas, which was a little bit before Megan gave birth, um, which made me excited again when I learned her using, <laughs> learned about her using Hagas. Um, so in my mind, I was like, well, great, I'm just going to use Hagas. But um, I then wondered if, because I'm going to want to donate, um, we'll get to that later. I wondered if that was going to get me enough. And that was one question I had from Megan. And she said, you, you're probably going to need a pump if you want to donate. So that I just wanted to throw that in the mix there too. Because you said many reasons. Oh, shoot. Hold on. Pause. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, where are we jumping back in? Um, you asked about pumps. Right. So I was going yeah. to talk about all the pumping. Please talk about all the pumping, Megan. Fill us in. What's, what's been your pumping experience? Man. Okay. I don't have all of the different kinds of pumping experiences, <laughs> but I have a fair few of them. So one, I pump to build up a stash I'm not doing this super aggressively, but um, since when I got my period, my supply went really low, I did end up going through all of the milk I had frozen, which wasn't a ton of milk. I don't even have a full day's worth of milk frozen. Um, but since when I got my period the last time, or the first time and the last time that I got it, um, I needed to use extra milk by the end of the day for like three or four days. Mm -hmm. Now, when this happens again, I will hopefully know what's happening and recognize what's happening a little sooner. So I will, you know, start eating my lactation cookies and start like doing the things that um, you do to stimulate supply. Mm -hmm. But... I do want to have a good amount of milk available to me to use during that time mm -hmm. um, if I need it. So I, <laughs> I tried when he was littler, I could haka on the side that he wasn't eating on. Now he's too aware of what's going on. And so he sees the haka and he's like, Ooh, what's that? I want to play with it. And so hmm. he gets distracted from eating and pulls the haka off and milk goes everywhere. Like, it's just a mess. So I don't <laughs> do that anymore. But um, when he was littler, I could put the haka on the other side and get the letdown from that side 
<coughs> and then that's just bonus milk basically right so yeah. unless you don't have enough milk which is a good i think it's a good way to stimulate your supply is to haka while you're breastfeeding because mm -hmm. then your letdown does come out and then your boob is stimulated to say okay now i need to make more um so you can use it to stimulate your supply pumping. And some people even use an electric pump like during the night when their baby is sleeping longer to pump while the baby is sleeping so that their supply stays up. So this is people with um, that need to keep stimulating their supply. Mm. Um, so that's one reason you can do it is to increase your supply. Um, or to create a stash, increase your supply, and then therefore have extra milk and create a stash. Um, and obviously, I pump while I'm working. I pump while the baby is being cared for by other people. Um, and again, that's mostly to keep my supply up and then also to have milk to give to that caregiver the next day that they're caring for them. Um, and so that's another reason to have milk while you're not there. Yeah. <laughs> um, then why else would you pump? If you, some people pump just in lieu of breastfeeding, like if, you know, if they didn't have a good experience latching or mm -hmm. if you have twins and you can't, breastfeed them both um or you know you can breastfeed them both but then you're just like breastfeeding 24 hours a day which at some point is too much um we can be i'm sure um i'll let you know i'll probably have twins <laughs> i know i'm so excited ah me too um, but i don't want them in the first one anyways i, I know <laughs> my my aunt had twins and i think she did breastfeed them um, exclusively for a while and then they ended up getting a virus and they had to go to the hospital so she was pumping and I don't know what happened after that but um, that I was very impressed yeah. Um, yeah so those are I think the reasons why you would pump if you're and not with and donating exactly yeah <clears throat> um, and with donating if you're still breastfeeding your baby, obviously you need to stimulate your supply to the point where you're making enough that you're making extra. Mm -hmm. So you can build that stash for somebody else. Um, and I think it's probably generally advisable wisdom to have some extra milk around for yourself and your baby. Um, Even if just, it's just you want to go out with your friends for a night and have your partner feed the right. baby like yeah or if it's like you want to take a nap <laughs> yeah I, especially I, at the beginning if you want to take a nap and have somebody else feed the baby yeah exactly um, one of the mom podcasts that i listen to um there's two of them and one of them talked about that like from the beginning she like you was very lucky that her baby took a bottle no problem mm -hmm. and they split up the the nights like one of them would stay up a little bit longer and then the other one um would take the second part of the night and sleep longer and she would pump so then her partner could feed the baby while she was getting some sleep so i think that's very smart that's gonna be something i want to do and i hope my baby's gonna take yeah. a bottle so i can <laughs> Yeah, yeah, definitely. I hope that for you too. It's Thanks. <laughs> it makes life so much easier. <laughs> I bet. Um yeah. So, so then how? How is the next question? So, we've already talked about hakas. They are great and in a pinch you can use them to do a like pumping session. You're not going to get as much as you will with a hand pump or an electric pump mm -hmm. um but they're amazing and wonderful and i think everyone intending to use their breast milk should have a haka um at least one i have two and it's ideal um and so we'll link them we'll link all of the things 
Oh yeah, we're linking all the things. Go to Don't our worry. website. You'll find it. You'll know how to get a haka. Yeah. <laughs> um so then the other thing you can use is an electric pump. And I have an electric pump with a and I'm gonna hold them up in the video. Um but I think this one is used, so that's a little gross. But an electric pump that attaches to a bottle and that you either get a pumping bra and put it in a pumping bra or you hold it up against your boob and it attaches with an air hose to the pump that creates the air movement and suction and it sucks the milk out of your boob. Mm -hmm. um, almost as if a baby were sucking it out of your boob. You're never going to get quite as much from a pump as a baby is going to get out of your boob, just because there's not the same mechanisms involved and there, you just can't get as much um, yeah. of a pull as a human can. Right. Um, and a haka is never going to get as much as a pump. Right. Is never going to get as much as a, like something creating suction or creating additional pressure differentials. <laughs> Um, Where does a hand pump come in there in, in that order? You know, I'm not sure. I haven't used a hand pump. Okay. Um, that is the one thing that I have not done. Um, just because I've got, I've got enough things. Yeah. <laughs> um, so this is what came with my electric pump and I used a motif Luna and I haven't used anything else. So I don't have anything to compare it to, but it works really well for me. Um, I have mentioned 17,000 times during this so far, but I have a lot of milk. So um, I don't need something with really intense suction. I don't think this has super intense suction. Um, so I wouldn't recommend it for people that really need like something to really go at their boob. Um, but I would definitely, I mean, it's quiet ish. It's not super loud. Um, it's got something that like, does it's got a massage mode, which Ooh. is not as nice as it sounds, oh. but it's basically just like a light, but fast suction mode where it just goes like bump, 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 bump. And that is to stimulate your leg. Okay. Um, because when a baby first latches on it, they um, suck a lot faster and more often. Mm -hmm. And that's to like get stuff going. And then once your letdown happens, they're doing longer, um, longer, stronger suck suction to get just to like drink, drink the milk. Yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so it has that on it. It has different length of sight. There's like some options for what you're doing, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's pretty easy to clean too. And it's a, oh, I'm going to get this wrong closed what it says on the box Let me see. Yeah, it doesn't say backflow there we go oh. it has backflow prevention which means that oh. your milk isn't going to run into the tubes that then go into the pump and you can ruin a pump that way um, but it probably is stronger if you don't have the back of prevention. That's just my assumption. Okay. So it has back flow prevention, which I wanted because I don't want to have to mess with trying to keep my milk out of the motor. Mm -hmm. Um, but you can also take the back flow preventers off, um, if you don't want them on there. So yeah, I've really enjoyed it. I got it through my insurance in the U S I think insurance companies are required to cover an electric pump. Oh, cool. I think it's like every 12 months or something for a new pregnancy. Um, so if I get pregnant again, my insurance would cover another pump if I were to need one. Mm -hmm. um, so Anyone in the U.S. having a baby that's interested in pumping, you can get a pump for free, and it's pretty straightforward. Um, your insurance should cover it if you have health insurance. 
Okay. So that's good. That's where I got mine. We can also link to some of those sites that do have insurance coverage, but you can also just buy a pump off of them if we want to. Um, the other thing that I have that was an add on to this whole system that I have, because I didn't want to sit around holding my pumps up against my boobs, <laughs> um, is free me cups. So I did watch some pumping videos before I started. Cause I knew I would be going back to work. And so I knew I, and I knew I would want to continue breastfeeding through that point. Um, so I was going to need a pump. Mm-hmm. And so the thing that I looked up was hands-free and you can get a pumping bra. Um, but I didn't want another, I don't know. Pumping bras just look annoying to me. (laughs) (laughs) Um, and I didn't want one. So I did this instead, which is there's a pump called the free me pump, which is a portable pump. Um, but what people have said is that um, it doesn't have great suction. Sorry about the noises. I'm putting my cup together. Um, so what I got instead was just the cup from the free me. Um, and it is compatible with the pump that I had. Mm -hmm. So my pump tube will connect into this free me cup. And then the cup goes into your bra and you set it up with your nipple going into the flange. It's got a flange like any other breast pump. And all of the part names for the breast pumps are intimidating until you actually have one. And then like, it's very clear what everything is. <laughs> okay. So there's a duckbill valve, there's the backflow preventer, and there's the flange. And the flanges have different sizes and the sizes correspond to the size of your nipple or areola. I have no idea. I don't know what the sizes correspond to, but they do impact how well the breast pump works. If you're in the wrong size, it's not gonna work as well. So if you're having trouble with your pump, that might be a good place to start, like try a different size flange. Mm-hmm. Um, but I love these because I can literally put them in and I try not to work while I'm pumping because you're supposed to have pumping breaks during the day. Um, if you're a breastfeeding mom while you're working, I'm working from home. So it's kind of weird, but sometimes I'll keep working while I'm pumping. Sometimes I will do something on my phone. I am stuck to the pump. Like I can't move around because it's not a mobile pump. But um, I love them. I love them so much. I love them so much. And I did have to buy these. They weren't covered. Although I probably could have gotten the free me pump covered or mostly covered. Um, But I put them on my registry. And one of my aunts, who is a nurse midwife, bought them for me. And that was awesome. And they're just great. Like (laughs) they try to sell them. Like they're all like subtle and no one will know that you're pumping. And that's just not true. (laughs) Because if you add this to your boob, this is like what? Like three inches wide. Yeah. No. It's huge. If you add it onto your boob, it's not subtle. (laughs) Your size. Yeah. At least. So yeah. But it's great. And you don't have to have your boobs out, which is nice. If you're in a nursing bra, it'll fit in there perfectly. And if you're in a fairly loose bra, it'll still fit in there really well. Um, Like a bralette or something. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I love these. I feel like this turned into an ad. It did. They're highly (laughs) recommended. I wish they were sponsoring us. They're not, but they're great. Um, So that's the other thing that I use. I have gone back to using the bottle attachment pump some. Um, because I do feel like it has a stronger suction. So now that my supply is going down a little bit, um, I have gone back to that some, but I still really love the free cups. Because then you have your hands free. 
Because then I have my hand, because they're free. Free me from the pumping. I get so, yeah. it. All right. <laughs> yeah. So those are those are the howls that I use. Um, and they're, I mean, it's a pretty, pretty wide spectrum of things. I feel, I feel like I use most of the things. Yeah. Um, I am interested to know if you could use a hand pump for donation or if that would be similarly um, next as the hakas, but I'm not sure. I don't even know if the hakas would be next for donation, just as, as long as you could keep the container clean. Maybe it's, I don't know. You looked into donation. What did you find out? Well, when I first looked into it, I was very um, taken aback. Discouraged. Thank you. Yes. Because I I mean, this should not have surprised me because I live in Germany. But (laughs) um, obviously, in order to have everybody safe and yeah for everything to, to be keep safe. everybody safe yeah there are regulations around it to mm-hmm. have it be a healthy situation and so unfortunately currently from what i have researched um you there are i need to start over <laughs> So there are very few, something around 20 clinics, places in Germany that accept and deal with milk donation, Seriously? which is very little. Only 20? Mm-hmm. Wow. And most of them don't accept donation from outside of the clinic. So you have to go into the hospital and you have to donate the milk there you have to pump there wow. which makes sense probably to me. using their pumps yeah which i get that that is the safest way to make sure that the health standards Equipment is clean and sterilized and the yeah. milk doesn't sit out and yeah know. however there there are some that do accept outside donations and that okay you know, just inform you and educate you on how you should be extracting the milk and storing and transporting it in order to, and they also, and cleaning you, your equipment. of course, cleaning your equipment. They give you all the health tests just as other clinics do um, mm-hmm. before they accept your milk and all that jazz. So I just got a little sad that um you know we got work to do there (laughs) that not all of them accept outside donations that there's even if all of them would accept outside donations it's not there are so few places places. yeah yeah and i so i obviously don't have a solution but i feel like we are a smart enough species to figure this out to have more options for people to donate and people to get donated yeah. milk. So from what I gathered in Germany, we don't even have enough donated breast milk for the preemies and hospitals. Mm-hmm. Um, when I thought about donating, I didn't even, which I wonder why it, it wasn't even on my radar that preemies and hospitals need breast milk because their mom in that moment many times can't breastfeed Mm -hmm. um I was just a lot of them aren't even strong enough to latch. like it would be impossible for them to latch so even if their mom were providing breast milk it would be pumped and if you're only pump you know and you're early anyway like it might not all work out so anyway there's a whole thing yeah when I thought about wanting to donate I just thought about people being out there that want to give their baby breast milk but are for whatever reason not capable to capable is not the word I want to lose um can't it didn't work out yeah Yeah. 
um, you know, it's, it can be because you're taking some medication that's important for you that would be dangerous for the baby. It could be that you have some illness that would be dangerous for the baby to drink your milk. It could be mm -hmm. that it's just not working, you know, so many yeah. reasons. So that's what yeah. I was thinking of that. I want to help mm -hmm. those people that want mm -hmm. to get their baby breast milk, but can't, mm -hmm. um, and didn't even think about the preemie situation. So anyways, It seems... Which I think is the main place that hospitals use breast milk. Exactly. Right? Use donated so, breast milk. Right because there's now, been a lot of studies about um, breast milk versus formula for preemies. babies in the ICU, in yeah. the neonatal ICU, um, and how that benefits them. Which, interestingly, there was also a study about baby wearing with those babies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, skin to um, skin. And skin to skin, skin to skin time, and like baby wearing time, which is very cool. Yeah, oh, it's very cool. And having multiples in the same container in the rather same than crib, yeah. Apart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. So, anyways, we're getting way too sidetracked. Um. <laughs> I was just very sad to learn that we don't even have enough milk. Yeah. For the hospital babies, mm -hmm. let alone, and. Even if we had an oversupply, so we had enough for the hospital situations and then had more, the way I'm interpreting it, in interpreting it, that's how you say that word. <laughs> that was very German. Was it? Um, yeah. Is that we wouldn't even have the structure to then donate that milk outside of the hospital system. So yeah, yeah. I, I wish that we could make some progress there. So there are, I did find an organization which is called Human Milk for Human Baby, Human Babies, am I saying that right? Hold on. Um, human Milk for Human Babies, yeah. Okay. Is a go I'm just going to read it. Human Milk for Human Babies is a global network represented by hum community pages for each state, province, country. These pages provide a space where families in need can connect with women who have milk to share. Oh, cool. Human milk for human babies. A firm said human milk is the biological norm for human infant and children. Human milk for human babies does not support the sale of human milk. So you read that really fast. I know. Um, I felt like it was too much. To <laughs> so, I could not follow there toward the end. Um, there, there is a network, a global network. And They have community pages. So I found a Facebook group for Germany where you can post if you need or if you have milk. And I think... Cool. I want to look up if there's one. Probably. <laughs> um, I'm going to link all of that also in the... In the <laughs> that's really loud in the microphone. <laughs> Sorry. Hopefully it won't be in the recording. Oh, that's true. It's probably just loud in mine. Um, so, I mean, obviously with that, you have a risk that like you can't be sure that the milk was extracted right. and handled and stored and transported right. Um, but they do give recommendations and like you have access to that kind of information. So that's where I'm at right now, that that is what I'm going to want to do. Um, I have, there is a hospital, a clinic, like a little bit over an hour away from me that accept donations, but not out, outside donations. So for right mm -hmm. now, I was thinking that I would like, if my postpartum situation allows <laughs> to go there once in a while and donate directly there to, cool. you know, donate there to, to do that. Mm -hmm. And then also to have the tests done there. Yeah, that's smart. And to get the information of how I can um, do this. Be responsible. Yeah. Um, and then do, continue that at home and offer the milk through the Human Milk for Human Babies community cool 
That's my plan for right now. It's neat that you found that. Yeah, it took me a while. It was pretty difficult to to research. Maybe that's also just because I don't like research and I'm really impatient. But I felt like that could be better. Yeah, we should try to find if they have an Instagram and see if we can share that too. Yeah. Nifty. Yeah, I think that's awesome. And I would love to... I intended to do it. I intended to donate before I started on this whole um, shebang. And it's just, it's a lot to learn how to breastfeed with your baby and to figure out pumping. And um, so I let myself just do it for me and my baby for the time around. And um, I don't know if my supply keeps up, maybe I can start, start donating at some point during this breastfeeding lifetime um but maybe also just wait till the next one yeah yeah that's cool I really I hope that that will work really well for you I'm excited to hear more about it because like you said you never know how it's going to turn out right I could have a really hard time with breastfeeding and just Mm -hmm. not have the bandwidth to also deal with over donating it's a goal yeah. that I have, but mm-hmm. I, I hope I'll be able to give myself the grace to let go of that if it turns out not to be doable. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Ay, ay, ay. Okay. You feel like we're done? Breastfeeding, man. Yeah. Do you think we can still do our announcement or is that going to add too much time-wise? I think we're going to, I think we should hold off on that one. And, oh, I'm so excited though. And do okay. it later. All right. Okay. So then I just left a teaser here. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah. Tune in <laughs> next time. We've got some exciting things going on. Yeah. At least we're really excited about it. Yeah. Exciting plans in the works. <laughs> yeah. Yay. Okay. okay. Wonderful. Really? This is fun. Yeah. I think so too. All boobies are good boobies. <laughs> the first that was a nice the, note to end. Yeah, the first time I went um, maternity shopping, I went to a store because it was before the world shut down, and <laughs> there was a big mural on the wall that said "All boobs are good boobs," and it had little pictures of different boobs, and it was so oh yay! Cute. It was like um, line drawings of boobs. It wasn't like actual photos. Right. It was really great. I loved it. That's Maybe we can cute. find that illustration somewhere and put it up on the website or something. But yeah, it was cute. Yeah. That's fun. That for some reason just did remind me that I'm a little scared of the size my boobs are going to be. We didn't even talk about that. We should do, we should do an episode on like body changes and stuff. Because you're huge as is. So imagining a multiply (laughs) in there just hurts me to think about it. And imagine with twins then. I did. Okay. I can't. You're not, we don't know that you're going to have twins. Okay. So I'm just going to say it here. Um, (laughs) My grandfather was a twin my husband has twins in his family. I forget how close or far away, um, but also he himself is a twin. So there, there is quite a possibility because they say the twins are in your future. Yeah. Yeah. Which is exciting. Like that's cool but it's also a little scary both exciting and also intimidating (laughs) yeah I'm I'm mostly fine with it as long as it's not the first pregnancy well duly noted I know I don't get it together uterus yeah (laughs) keep that in mind we have plans and you need to stick to them so well so in in my readings whenever and and infant descendant energy communicated with me it was always just one so I'm very hopeful that the first is just one yeah (laughs) 
Anyways, <laughs> we should go. Off we go. Thank you for sharing all the things. Thank you for talking about breastfeeding with me. It's very weird that we do that thing. It's very cool. I feel very much like a mammal. <laughs> well, we are. I know. It's so cool. Yeah. Oh, and if there is anyone out there listening that would like to come onto this podcast and talk about, um, well, anything and also breastfeeding, but um, specifically right now, I wanted to say their experience around not breastfeeding and feeding the yeah, baby. that'd be cool. Otherwise, because so far we can't speak on that. So if anyone would like to come on and speak about that, I think that would be nice to to paint the I'm whole picture or at least have more pieces. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So let us know. Good call. Let us know. All right. Then see you next week. Bye. Bye.